What's going on everybody? I'm Johnny Brook. Welcome back to another Craft and Workshop video. In today's video, I built this awesome DIY platform plywood bed with my buddy Chris from Four Eyes Furniture. What's up everybody? And the nice thing is it has an extra little feature, this backlit LED headboard. Chris, you mind turning it on the other side? No problem. All right, without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. The idea for this collaboration really started about a year and a half ago when I watched Chris's first video on his Four Eyes channel. In case you're not familiar with Chris's channel somehow, pause this video, open a new tab, go watch all of them, and then come back. They're really that good. From the first video onwards, Chris set the bar for the rest of us YouTube woodworkers very, very high. His camera work, soothing voiceover, witticisms, and woodworking acumen come together into something that really is greater than the sum of its parts. Chris's videos are even entertaining to non-woodworkers, which is something that's really difficult to achieve. Even my own wife says she prefers Chris's videos to my own. Thanks, babe. But really, so do I. It's hard to bring emotion and humor into this hobby of ours, and Chris does it with seeming ease. Anyway, back to the collaboration. When I heard Chris's wife was pregnant, I knew the clock was ticking to get this collaboration done, so I invited myself to a shop and set the date. After some thinking about what we'd build, Chris came up with this idea for a modern platform bed made of plywood. Also, this build being made entirely of plywood meant I could introduce Chris to Purebond plywood, my go-to plywood for this type of project. The lack of voids in Purebond lends itself especially well to projects that feature exposed plywood edges like this one. The shots you've seen up until this point have been Chris and I working on the bed frame. Chris covers the build process of the bed frame in his video, so you should go check that out before continuing with this video if you haven't already. With the frame out of the way, it was time to work on my part of the project, the headboard. The cool thing about this headboard project is it's really independent of the bed frame. If you've got a bed with a boring headboard, you could easily build this to fit your own bed. The headboard is made from a single piece of 3 quarter inch thick Purebond maple plywood, about 94 inches long by 28 inches tall, but this size will depend on the size of mattress you're building your bed around. The headboard is cut up into multiple pieces, with some pieces removed along the way, and then reassembled to give the headboard the appearance of one single piece. The first step in making the headboard was to cross-cut a 3-inch strip off of either end of the headboard. It's a good idea to label these so that you can reassemble the pieces later and have the grain flow across the pieces. After cutting the pieces off the ends, we moved on to ripping the strips from the center section of the headboard, which will give the piece a slatted look. The strips are all 3 inches wide, with a 3 quarter inch gap between them. We ripped one 3 inch strip from the top edge of the center section, ripped the bottom part of the center section to 16 inches, and then ripped the rest of the 3 inch strips from the off cut from that piece. With the headboard broken into pieces, much like Humpty Dumpty, I needed to put it back together again. There are a ton of options for doing this, but I went with dominoes since that's what Chris had on hand. Pocket holes and dowels would have also worked really well here. I marked the location of my dominoes with 3 quarter inch spacer blocks between the slats and then cut the domino mortises. I used 8mm by 50mm dominoes for this, which are plenty strong for this application. Assembling the headboard was actually a little trickier than we expected, mainly because we didn't have clamps long enough. The first idea was to add these blocks to the back side of the headboard and clamp them together, but they just caused the pieces to bow apart, leaving a crack on the front of the headboard. After having a mild panic attack, we moved on to plan B, which was to hook two clamps together. This worked out well, although we were still left with a few small gaps due to the plywood flexing. Once the first glue up had dried, I moved on to adding the spacer blocks between the slats. These were placed completely randomly and were cut from 3 quarter inch wide strips of plywood. I added these extra blocks with the X's marked on them so that I could apply clamping pressure without the slats bowing. This random slat pattern was heavily inspired by Chris's take on the Nelson bench. I loved the look of the random slat length in his build and I also loved how the corners were rounded. To simulate this effect, I added a round over to the inside edges of all the slats using a router. After rounding over the edges, I sanded the headboard up to 180 grit, making sure the spacer blocks were flush with the surface of the headboard. While I'm sanding, let's talk about one of the sponsors of this week's video, Lisa. I've been sleeping on a Lisa mattress and pillow for the last few days, and I am loving the experience. I've been in dire need of a new mattress for a while now, and it's amazing how those little aches and pains can be solved with a new mattress. If you'd like to try a Lisa mattress for 100 nights risk-free, use the coupon code CRAFTEDWORKSHOP for $100 off the Lisa mattress, 
or click the link in the video description for the coupon code to be automatically applied. Thanks again to the folks at Lisa for sponsoring this video and improving my sleep. After sanding, I applied a few coats of General Finish's Armor Seal for the finish. Once the finish had dried, Chris and I moved inside to get the headboard installed on the bed frame. We attached the headboard to the base with a few 4 inch power head screws on each side, making sure to get at least one screw into the bed base and nightstand on each end. With the headboard secured in place, I started installing the LED lights. First I laid out the strips using painter's tape to temporarily hold them in place. For this headboard we used two LED strips which are each controlled by their own switch and power supply. One switch is located on each end of the headboard so that the amount of light can be modulated depending on whether one switch or both switches are turned on. I'll have a link to the exact strips we used in the video description below. To hold the switches in place and tidy up the wiring, I installed some of these cable clips onto the back of the headboard. This certainly isn't the most elegant way to do this, but the back of the headboard will never really be seen, and this makes it easy to replace parts if anything ever goes wrong with the LED strips. If I wanted to get a little more fancy, I could have routed in the switches flush, but we kind of ran out of time to do that. Once the switches were in place, the headboard was done. All right, hopefully you guys enjoyed this one. I'm really happy with the way this turned out. It kind of has this almost Japanese aesthetic to it. The LED lights add so much to the look and it's really a pretty simple project. You could build the whole thing with really a table saw and a drill, uh, probably use a pocket hole jig for the headboard and uh, it would look awesome. So uh, we will have plans available for this. So if you do want to build this yourself, you can check those out. Also, I do have a few Crafted Workshop shirts left. Uh, we'll be ordering another batch soon. So go ahead and get in on these before they sell out. Also, I have links to all the tools and materials I use in the video description below. And last, if you want to support me a little further, check me out on Patreon. All right, thanks everybody for watching, and until next time, happy building. Dude, Claire, nailed it. <laughs>